One thing a lot of people say when I tell them I'm planning to go to medical school is that's going to take so long. You know, they'll, they know that you got to go to undergraduate for four years, then you got to complete medical school, which takes four years. Then you have to do residency, which is anywhere from one to seven more years. So in total, that's, let's see, like at a minimum nine years in theory and at a maximum, you know, that could be like, if you get an MD, PhD, I mean, it can go on for a very long time. And I just want to talk about, first of all, why I think framing it in that way is a little bit deceptive. And the reason I say that is because you've got to think about it as though, like from the perspective of your whole life, like you're going to turn 30 one way or another. And it's a matter of what you want to do during the years of your life. You know what I mean? Because if you just immediately start a career out of high school, let's say, then you're going to be doing that same career for your entire working life. And your working life will be longer if you start your career immediately out of high school, almost certainly, because you'll have lower earnings potential. If you don't do any type of trade school, if you don't do anything, and you immediately start working at restaurants, you can make decent money. But recognize, first of all, it's going to you're going to be doing the same exact thing for like 40 years, or 30 years or, or forever, you know, a lot of people don't retire, if you go to the grocery store, you'll see people at the checkout line that are old, you know, they have gray hair. And I recognize, look, a lot of those people probably had other things happen in their life um, that made them have to work longer, but you can work forever. That's the underlying thesis here. And learning and being in school is a lot more interesting. It's much more dynamic. It's much different. You know, when you're an undergraduate, it's very different than when you're in your first two years of medical school. And when you're in your second two years of medical school, that's very different than the first two years because now you're doing clinical stuff, you're working with patients, and residency is also different. But also on top of that, um, you can easily finish your undergraduate degree in under four years. I graduated in a little over three years. You can do an accelerated MD program and finish that in three years. Um, you know, a lot of places now are allowing you to graduate in three years if you know what specialty you want to do, like an accelerated program. Or if you wanted to do primary care, uh, I think some schools have like a four-year program where you do the residency and the under the uh, medical school, and it's all four years. So, you know, there's a lot of different types of doctors. That's one thing. Second thing is you're going to turn 30 anyway, whether you're a doctor or not. So I think that's part of what makes people uncomfortable is they're like, okay, it's going to take me 12 years to be a practicing physician out of residency or whatever. And uh, then I'm going to be like 32, you know, or however old you'll be. And when you think about your age, that scares people. But that time's going to go by one way or another. And it's going to either be very monotonous and you'll be in your working career or it won't be. And I, and I, I acknowledge that there's careers where there's more difference day to day and there's careers where there's less difference day to day and some of it comes down to personal preference but the main thing here is it's like don't let that amount of time scare you just because you think about how old you're going to be that's really important i would say some reasons to be more concerned about the time is if you're really eager to start a family immediately you know it, it's going to be somewhat challenging to start a family if you're older and you're planning to start medical school, like say you're 22, you haven't gone to college yet and you're thinking about becoming a doctor and you want to raise a family. Well, see, now that is a reason to maybe be a little more hesitant about starting a 12 year long journey where you're going to just be taking on debt mostly and not earning any money. So it is a little bit situation dependent. I would say the time difference when you're younger is much more negligible than when you're older. And another thing, too, this is another point. People think, okay, I'm going to be 32 by the time I'm a doctor. And then they sort of just imagine that all that time is going to disappear. And they're just going to be in a study room for 12 years. And they're going to miss out on life. They're going to miss out on the world. And what I would say to that is it's not like time just disappears. I've done a lot of really fun stuff. During my undergraduate years, I've gone up middle sister. I've been on some backpacking trips. I've been on surfing trips. I ride my motorcycle around. It's like there's space for life 
during your studying, you know, during the years where you're studying. It's a myth uh, that's propagated by neurotic pre-meds, in my opinion, that if you're studying medicine, there's no time for anything else. If you only want to study, you can definitely make it so that there's not time for anything else. But if you want to balance your life with your studies, that's possible to do. It's very possible to do, uh, certainly at least while you're an undergraduate. And that's another reason why I think everyone should take a gap year that's planning to go to medical school is to make more space for life when you're younger. Because in my other video, which I'll link, I'm trying to figure that out, it's new, but for me, uh, where I talk about time and how people think about time and money and everything in the wrong way, you got to recognize that there's periods in your life where experiences are available to you. And then as you get older, those experiences disappear. When you are 18 to 21 to 25 or whatever, you have the ability to like travel and stay in hostels with other young people. But when you're 45, sure, you can stay in the hostels, but it's not going to be the same experience. You, you lose the ability to travel and be around other young people and have that specific flavor of the experience once you become older, because now you're not going to be the same age as the other travelers. And uh, in a more extreme note, you know, while you're younger and healthier, you have the ability to ski and mountain bike and surf and do outdoor activities that are a little harder on your joints and uh, your energy. Whereas when you're like 60 or 70 or 80, you lose the ability to have those experiences for the most part. You know, there's maybe some 70 year olds that are able to like go wakeboarding and then go skiing and go hiking, but there's less of them. And more than likely, you're going to have some health stuff happen to you as you get older and you, the, the opportunity to have those experiences is going to go away. So don't be that person that is just devoting all your time to studying. Be the person that's making room for the life experiences that you won't have available to you as time passes. Anyway, so my main thesis of the video is that don't let the age that you will be when you finish medical school deter you. Don't fall for the myth that you will not have room for life while you're studying and progressing towards becoming a doctor. And uh, also consider what would happen if you don't try to become a doctor. You would be in a different profession and you would be working. You know, you'd be in your working years, probably doing a more repetitive career than you would as a doctor. Because as a doctor, you're going to see all sorts of different stuff and there's a lot more variation day to day than some other professions. Of course, like I said earlier, there's professions with more variation. So that's all I've got. Uh, click the, bit, the buttons below the video to follow me on my journey to becoming a doctor. And tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow and every Friday for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be starting a new series called Science in the News, where I talk about new discoveries, new articles, things that are science and medicine related. And at first, it's going to be a video series. But as time goes on, I'm going to turn it into a live stream and I will allow people to send messages to me and I'll respond to them with some sort of super chat feature. I'm trying to grow the channel right now. There's not really a lot of people watching these videos yet. So help me with that, you know, make it so that I can start live streaming and start unlocking YouTube features. This has been a little bit longer of a video, but hopefully you stay till the end. That's all I got.